Let's see what I have in my little shopping cart today. Thanks for watching. I went ahead and I mounted all of the stuff that I was going to talk about today already to the truck, just because it makes things a whole lot easier and it will allow me to explain what issues I ran into. Uh, today the main brand that we're going to talk about is, I have no idea how to uh, pronounce this, Y-R-U-C-E-C. -E I will make sure that there's a link to his Instagram and also to his uh, website in the video description box so you can check it out. He makes some incredibly cool stuff. The first part that I ever uh, laid my eyes on uh, of his hand was, um, it's basically a Baja Designs, I believe it's an LP9 replica light that I really wanted to have for uh, my SCX6, but also for the SCX10. I saw at Proline by the Fire, I saw a full-size truck rocking these lights instead of headlights and it looked so incredibly sick. I hope you can agree with me that it also looks fantastic on this CJ7. This is a part that we will talk about a tiny bit later in this uh, video. Why are you CEC? He has a ton of cool items listed on his uh, website and I highly recommend uh, checking it out. Most of the stuff is uh, 3D printed, some of it is laser cut. Uh, not laser cut with like uh, a diode laser, but laser cut with like some sort of super fancy metal cutting monster laser. So uh, those are also some items that you see on this Axial uh, SX103 Jeep CJ7. That's a mouthful. Now, in the previous videos, we have dropped the suspension on this thing just because I found that it stood a bit tall and uh, the way it came out of the box. Added some really nice spec RC rims. Added some Toyo Open Country uh, tires from Proline Racing. I think they look fantastic. They're a tiny bit smaller than the stock tires, so that also avoids them rubbing after me dropping the suspension. I added this uh, bed insert, which I designed myself, and I cut this one on my X2 laser. I added these uh, AliExpress or whatever it was, Amazon uh, lights in the front, those uh, IPF ones, light bar, and I'm not super happy with. Uh, that's about it. Uh, now, if we take it from the back to the front, you will see that I added some bars over here. If you have the stock Axial SX103 Jeep CJ7, it looks very a bit dull on the side. So there's a lot of flat black going on. It is literally flat black. There's no shapes whatsoever. Uh, and I wanted to break that up a tiny bit. So the first thing I did was I added these bars on the sides. These are uh, 3D printed. They are pretty tough. So you get some uh, different hardware with them as well because these tap into uh, the cage. So there's like an extended tab on those uh, cage bottoms and you thread those screws into that space just to secure everything. Uh, the second part that I added is this big luggage rack. I really like the way that this looks. The stock Axial SX103 Jeep CJ7 doesn't have any luggage options. So you have a, like a flat panel in the back. I already uh, managed to avoid having that by adding this wooden boot, basically. And then if you want to have some additional boot space, you can add a rack like this. This is from uh, YRUCEC. This is the logo if you haven't seen it. Um, really cool, really easy to mount. This thing comes with uh, two clamps that you put around uh, these bars of the cage. Then on top of that, I believe this is a uh, stainless, you mount this uh, stainless piece which uh, also comes with two little brackets in which you can then tap the basket for uh, lack of better wording. Uh, on top of that I've put uh, a Proline cooler and I put a Knight Customs uh, 3D printed, I believe this is like a Pelican case. I will make sure that this is uh, linked in the video description box. You can find this on, uh, amongst other sites, my mini factory. And I used a worn strap to uh, secure this into place. I believe that this worn strap as well that I got this from uh, AliExpress, but don't pin me on it. Uh, looks nice, you can adjust the length on it. This is actually one of the few AliExpress parts that I really, really like. Uh, then, going to the interior, there's uh, now an oh shit bar. So. The passenger side really didn't have anything to hold on to, apart from this uh, little uh, rail in the top. 
So I wanted to have something really on the dashboard as well. Uh, stock, it comes with a sticker. I left the sticker in place just because it doesn't really get in the way of the look and it uh, sets it off nicely. But putting a, an additional bar over there really makes, I think, a bit of a difference in giving you something more to look at for that interior. And of course, a, a really big eye-catching change are these door panels that I put on the outside. This gives it like an armored look. These are a true pain in the ass to uh, put on there. You really need to take your time. Uh, tons of little screws. I'm not sure if you can see it. These are some of the smallest screws I've ever worked with. If you ever wonder if you can start, for example, uh, a watch repair shop, stuff like that. If you wonder if you need reading glasses, if you wonder how your motor skills are, your fine motor skills in your fingers, I highly recommend ordering some of these parts because you will put everything to the test. Uh, thankfully, I don't need reading glasses yet. Also, my fine motor skills are still pretty good. The only thing you really, really need for mounting these parts is an excellent set of drivers. Now, the drivers I use are uh, these. Let's see if this box is open. These are my uh, Baco drivers. So there's a lot of different sizes in here, a lot of different uh, head types. So there's flat, there's Phillips, there's some uh, torque, and there's also some, uh, some hex heads. These are fantastic. Uh, they cost quite a bit, but I've been using them for, uh, for years. If you keep them uh, in its case, uh, everything stays in really good nick and they are super accurate. So there's always uh, a head in here that fits the head of those screws or a tip in here that fits the head of those screws. And having a good fitting driver is absolutely paramount in being able to execute the installation of all of these parts. If we uh, go to the front, you see over there as well, I added two faux hinges and also uh, a cowl, what do you call it? A cowl opening, which isn't really an opening, but more like a, a cover. Tiny screws, you really need to do your best not to mess that up. So uh, what I did, I used this uh, tiny pin, just to uh, make like a little divot so I could start threading my screws in because I don't have any type of drill that is small enough to actually uh, punch a hole of that size. Uh, last thing I did, I really didn't like this uh, stock Stinger style uh, bumper. Uh, it's period correct, I guess, and uh, it looks fine for most, but I wanted to have something that looks a tiny bit more purpose-built. So I wanted something that uh, encompasses that uh, front of that uh, Jeep CJ7. I also want something that uh, can still house uh, a big winch. So I have this, um, what winch is this again? It's either, I think it is an 8274 by RC Volvo Drive. This is a licensed worn winch. I'm not going to use it, so uh, it's just there for decoration. But I do think that it looks fantastic. This bumper as well is from YRUCEC. It is 3D printed. It looks fantastic. Uh, in functionality, it's of course not as tough as a steel bumper or metal bumper, uh, but it really looks the part, and that is exactly what I was going for. I took the shackles of the, of the old bumper and uh, put those on the new uh, bumper that I have installed. Also, one tiny concession that I needed to do was this worn winch needed to be a tiny bit off-center. So what I chose to do is I chose to put the worn logo on the center of the bumper and then my fair lead is slightly off-center. It is slightly towards the driver's side of the bumper. Not a big deal at all, I think. The biggest thing that uh, happened, I think, facelift-wise to this truck, which is that uh, front with those uh, Baja Designs LP9s, uh, they look absolutely dope, I think. You do need to uh, put in a tiny bit of elbow grease to get them installed. So I took these old light covers out of the front and then after that I used my Dremel and I almost lost an eye as well. So I took my Dremel with this uh, little sanding drum and I actually had a few of them come apart. But the first one really exploded and I was just using safety squints. So really stupid of me to not use any safety glasses because it nearly hit me in the eye. So I nearly lost eyesight over installing some uh, RC accessories. Anyway, once I did uh, use safety glasses and put on a new sanding drum, I grinded away a tiny bit more material because you really need to have some more depth in these light pockets and also a tiny bit more uh, diameter uh, space. And after that, I installed these uh, little lights. 
it's almost a shame that you cannot see the detail on the back anymore now that they are installed. But just for the sake of demonstration, I will show you these SCX6 sized uh, lights that also come from, uh, from the same brand. You will see the craftsmanship, but also the level of uh, detail that uh, they have. They look absolutely mind-blowingly cool. Uh, so I got those installed. I also have added some paint on that uh, grill section. So I masked it off, gave it a coat of primer, and then I used, I believe it was a TS42 light gun metal, which is incredibly close to the color that Axial has used to detail this uh, CJ7 body, if you have the gray one, that is the gray one with the blue stickers. I'm not going to repaint this one, I have a couple of other trucks that I'm going to paint in the coming weeks, so if you are just here for the painting content, do not despair, it is definitely coming up. Uh, I think this truck looks really nice and finished as it is. I'm really content and happy with uh, the outcome, I hope you uh, will agree on that. So we did uh, some paint on the interior, we uh, painted the chairs, we painted the center armrest, did some uh, work with uh, the bed, then added a ton of cool accessories. It weighs quite a bit too right now, and then we added some performance by dropping it down. I will most likely change out the steering servo for a Reefs RC servo, and I will also most likely change out the electronics for some Castle electronics. Thinking uh, a Mamba X, and a nice slate motor will really finish the job on this one. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section. I always try to get back to you. Uh, if you have not subscribed yet, of course, please do. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button. If you have any questions regarding the stuff that I used, please go and check out uh, the links to see uh, what's what. I uh, highly recommend checking out uh, the Instagram page as well of uh, YRUCEC. He takes some fantastic pictures and I uh, highly recommend giving him a follow. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.